everybody. Welcome back to the Gamerpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Bradford Carlton. Today, we are talking about the cost of information. So I was just getting off of an interview. I just got off of an interview. And during the interview, uh, my guest was discussing how uh, while she was building her business, everybody was telling her what she needed to do. You need the things that she needed to do. You need to go here. You need to apply for that. You need to you know, go to this type of convention. And she had the point that despite the fact everyone was telling her what she needed to do, nobody was telling her how to do it. And because of that, she had to go figure out how to do this stuff herself. And she had to experience all kinds of challenges and trials and missteps and things didn't always go right. And because of that, she felt embarrassed and, you know, she just wished that she was able to have done something different right? If, if only someone had told her the how as opposed to just the what. And that got me thinking about my experience here in the gaming space because, you know, I'm a business coach and what I do is I do a lot of telling people what to do and a little bit of the how, right? My job is not necessarily to get my hands dirty up in your business and do things for you. It's to tell you what you're supposed to do. And I can tell you that you need to go to like this type of bank and you need to apply for this type of thing and you need to talk to this type of person. Person, but I'm not going to be able to tell you which branch to go. I'm not going to tell you which branch to go to. I'm not going to tell you which rep to talk to. I'm not going to tell you what exact paperwork you need to take in with you. And so it got me thinking um, a little bit more about consulting. And um, as I've gone around in the gaming space, I, I've talked to lots of different people and I've tried to pitch lots of different people and different businesses of my services and why they need to hire a coach who has business experience outside of the gaming space and, and you know, why it applies here in the gaming space. And I would say um, my experience kind of from the opposite side, she would have been like a potential customer from the opposite side, from the position of a coach, um, you know, that, that the difference between what and how is something that you, you can, yeah, how, how a mentor of mine told me it like this, you're, you're, not, you're not able to tell somebody how to climb a mountain until you've climbed the mountain. Right. So no matter how, how many times I, I, I can try to explain to you what you need to do. All right. And give you the details, maybe tell you a little bit of the how there's no way I can tell you exactly how you are going to be able to do it because your experience is going to be so different just because of the way things are. It is going to be so different from what I experienced or what my other clients have experienced that it would be a disservice to you to tell you, you know, step one through 17, this is exactly what you're supposed to do. Do not deviate from it. Because what happens if you get to step 12 and all of a sudden, like things are different. They don't have this web portal anymore. Where am I supposed to go? Well, I told you how to do it this one way, but now you're stuck because you are, you're going to feel cheated. You're going to feel that it's not, you know, that darn Brad, he didn't give me what I was supposed to get from this, which is why, you know, from my experience as a coach and a consultant, the, the, what is the more important thing? Because each person who wants to go into entrepreneurship, who has their own business, who's trying to develop something for themselves, it is for themselves, it is going to be unique. And we're not talking about just one action or one occurrence that defines an entire business. We're talking about months and years of practice and effort and communication and doing business, right? I'm a business person. I do business, right? So what by, by telling you the what... I'm able to give you that high level discussion, that high level understanding of, you know, that 30,000 foot view, as they say, of looking down and seeing the forest, right? If, if I'm trying, if I tell you every single tree in that forest, you know, you're, you're either going to get confused or you're going to get lost because what if a tree is not there anymore? What if it fell down? Like, oh, there was supposed to be a tree here and it's not there anymore. And now all I see is the stump. Like, is it this is a stump? So, I, I absolutely understand what she was talking about, right? I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to diminish what she was saying at all. There, there may be a point that you have to, you, you just may not be able to figure it out yourself. And in that situation, and it's something that I, I, I see a lot of animosity toward here in the gaming space, especially uh, more so than any other field I've worked in is there may be somebody out there who knows exactly how to do what you're supposed to do. Okay. The thing is, 
If you want that information, you're more likely going to have to pay for it. Okay. And it may be in the form of a book. It may be in the form of an online course. It may be in the form of actually going into somebody's office and they like, okay, well, we can do it for you, or we can give you our cheat sheet and you can do it yourself. And I don't know what it is about the gaming space, but there, I don't know if it's because of the internet generation, right? Where you can get all the information for free, no problem. I just got to go to YouTube and I can figure that stuff out. Do you know there is a ton of stuff you cannot learn on YouTube? Like, yeah, you can learn a ton on YouTube. I, I learn, I've learned a ton of stuff on YouTube. Anytime I try to like learn something more for my graphic design skills, which are very, very slowly coming over many, many years, I go to YouTube and I type in the question, how do I make this kind of effect? And there's usually a video I'm like, sweet. Okay. But there are some things you're just not able to learn either because someone hasn't made the content for it yet, or because it may be out of date or just because, you know, it's not the videos that are there don't quite put the whole picture together. And the reason it might not be putting the whole picture together is because the person is trying to sell all the information behind the scenes, right? How many videos have you gone to or at the end they're like, hey, if you want my whole course on how to make X, Y, Z, you know, check out my website at da, 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 da. So, you know, YouTube is great. Yes. And it may tell you the what you need to do but it may not necessarily tell you the how of what to do. And this is something that, you know, people have had to discover for themselves for thousands of years. I mean, in a Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, like the seminal book that million, many, many millionaires accredit for their success, okay? The book that teaches you how to think your way into riches, which is totally possible. It really is. Um, he says that it pays to know how to get information, okay? Why do you go to school, why did you go to college, right? So many people think that, well, I went to college, I got a degree, now I can learn everything else from YouTube. They, they don't, like there's some sort of disparity between having gone to school and paying tens of thousands of dollars for a piece of paper that most people get that piece of paper, that diploma, don't use it in the field that they got it in, okay? as opposed to going and paying maybe $3,000 for a 40 hour course where somebody who has been in the industry and has been doing the business, making the money, figured out all the ups and all the downs. They do a 40 hour course on it, show you the ins and outs, show you how to do it. They charge $3,000 and you're gonna go, well, I could just go and learn that all on YouTube. Do you know how ignorant you sound? No offense, but like you should never stop learning and you should never put your nose up at something just because it costs a little bit of money. You don't know the value of what's in that guy's package or girl's package. You don't know, or woman's package. You don't know what exactly it is you're going to get, right? It's like you didn't know what you're going to get when you went to college. You just knew you had to go to college, right? When I was growing up, I wasn't told, you know, that, you know, I was basically told I'm going to college. Like I have to go to college, right? And so it was a matter of which college do I go to? There was no real thinking about whether it was worth it or not. I had to beg, borrow and steal to be able to go to college, right? I had to get the money together to go because I had to go. And then I had to go to law school. So again, I had to beg, borrow and steal to make every dollar I possibly could and get you know scholarships and, and all that, what have you, in order to go to law school. And then I got out and I saw an ad for somebody, you know, teaching, you know, digital marketing. I'm like, ah, oh, why would I want to spend money on that? I could just go to YouTube. And that's what I did. And I would went and I read lots of blogs and I spent lots of time and lots of testing and lots of testing and lots of failing. I did a lot of bad, bad ads and a lot of bad copy and a lot of bad images. And I didn't have a clue what I was doing because I was trying to piece things together from little things people were saying here and there, rather than looking at it as a holistic program that I could have gotten for far less money than the time was worth that I spent trying to figure it out. And it, it blows my mind here in the gaming space that so many people just don't even see the value in, it, in extending their education. Like for some reason they think, oh, well, I can just go to Udemy and get a course, 10 hour course for like a hundred bucks. I don't see that. Why would I spend $3,000? So my wife grew up in a family, just a side note. My wife grew up in a family that um, it was always the generic brand, like always the generic brand. If they could get the generic of the generic brand, they would have gotten that, right? And so when my wife came to start living with me and my family, it was never the generic brand. My mother had to have like the best 
of the best stuff. And so having grown up with like the best of the best stuff, my wife would go and she would buy something generic and I would t- eat it or try it. I'm like, this is junk. Like, do you not understand how this is so much junk compared to this other brand? And she didn't. In her mind, she could not conceive of the the name brand, higher end stuff actually being better. It It was so foreign to her that she would get angry at me because I was trying to tell her that she was wrong. And don't don't tell your wife you're wrong, right? (laughs) Okay. And so I had to go and I like we had to go get the name brand. I'm like, try this as opposed to it. And she would try it. And it blew her mind just how much better the name brand almost always was as compared to the generic or like the generic generic that didn't stop her though the next time she went to the grocery store from getting the generic again because she just couldn't help herself she knew it was better she understood it only cost like a little bit more not even that much more because come on the difference between generic and name brand is a couple dollars a couple dollars does not bankrupt anybody but it can improve your life but that's beside the point and not necessarily beside the point because that's the point i'm trying to make and i think about it like the difference between a hundred dollar training program is not that it's not that it's a bad course. Okay. It, it will fill you so to speak, but it may not be the best course. It may not give you exactly what you need, or it may have holes in it because it's a hundred dollar course. The person who made it may be looking to sell something else out of it. Cause trust me, I've done that too. You give a, you know, couple, you know, this many hours of your course, you use package it this way. And you let them know at the end, you know, I was only able to spend this many hours with you, but you really need like this many hours, you know, like 30 times what I just gave you. And you need additional like one-on-one coaching to have someone look over your shoulder, figure out whether you're doing the right thing or not. So if you're interested, come and apply with me. I'll show you how to do this. Like just because you're not paying a lot of money doesn't mean you're getting the best deal. All right. My mother um, drilled into my head when I was young, the difference between the word cheap and inexpensive. And too many people confuse those two words. Inexpensive does not mean cheap. Okay. But cheap does not necessarily, usually means inexpensive. Okay. Cheap, the real word means of low quality. That's what cheap means. It does not mean inexpensive. Inexpensive means low price. All right. So if you are going to go and be cheap, you get what you bought, you you're paying for. Okay. So the point I'm trying to make in this episode is this one person I talked to had an issue. She was getting information from people who were giving it to her for free. And she was upset that people were not giving her more. Now she could have gone and got more that information. was probably out there from somebody. She would have had to pay for it is what I'm trying to say. The, the amount of money that you pay is usually in correlation to the value that you get. And I'm trying to, I'm, I'm really trying to change the psyche, the paradigm of the, the video game space and especially the people in it, because too many people have that mindset that they want it for free. In fact, I did another interview just this morning where my guest was lamenting about the fact that everybody who was reaching out to his company was basically asking for stuff for free. He's like, I have had affiliates, uh, you know, partners or, um, who ask for stuff and then, you know, they're asking for, for free. And if uh, I don't give it to them, maybe we do the affiliate relationship, but then they don't go and do the stuff that's required in the affiliate relationship. And I'm SOL because I can't exactly sue them. It's not worth it for me to sue them. So, you know, there's something about this space. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's, we think we're poorer than we are. You're not poor. You have all kinds of resources available. Money is not hard to find in this planet. You think it is. That's just because you don't know enough. You need to study more or talk to somebody who knows how to find money because those people exist too. I'm one of those people, FYI. Okay. What you need to do is you need to understand that just because you can get it for free doesn't mean it's the best value. Just because it's inexpensive or cheap does not mean it's the best value. You have to take a look and without concern for the costs, figure out what is best for you? How do you advance your life? How do you grow your business? What services do you need? Take a good, hard, honest look at you and yourself, your business, and make the the hard decisions. 
Yes, it may hit that wallet really hard. You may be, it may be really tight. You might not necessarily even be able to afford it. But if it's going to take you from A to L when you were only hoping to get to B, it's worth it, right? That's what value is. Value and price are not correlated usually when it comes to uh, pricing strategies, okay? People price things so that the price is a, should be a small fraction of what the value is that the person purchasing it gets, okay? Value is the, the, the um, call it intrinsic amount that they think it's worth to them, okay? So um, my subjective belief that this is worth $1,000, you're only selling it for 30, that's incredible, of course I'm gonna buy it. All right. It's when people start getting nitpicky and they're like, well, you know, the price is a little bit lower on this. So I'm going to go with that one that they it's the lower the price, the lower the value. And that's usually how it works, because as you keep as you lower the price, your competitors are going to be lowering the price and some other competitors going to lower the price even further. And eventually you get to the point where the margins are so thin that you're not able to give the kind of value that's going to advance your customer much further than the cost of the thing in the first place. All right. You have to understand that it pays to know where to get the knowledge that you're looking for. You have to understand it costs money. And that's just the price of it. Like you went to school to learn the thing that you're doing, right? It, if you think that degree was worth it, then you should understand this concept. If you don't think your degree was worth it, you made a bad decision. That's your fault, not necessarily anybody else's. Make a better decision the next time around. Vet the, the information better. Figure out who the company is. Will the, What is the value to you? How will it actually affect you? And then, you know, make that decision. But that's really what I want to talk about. I, I kind of, you know, one of those uh, grind my gears kind of episodes, just because I, I want to help as many people as I can. And I, I'll tell you this, from a coach's perspective, from a business person's perspective, who has helped a lot of people, when I give stuff away for free, it's not valued. And it sounds, it sounds weird, right? Like you would think that, of course, I'm going to, if you're going to give me this thing that's worth a thousand dollars to me, like, of course, I'm going to value it. That's not true. That's not true at all. Think public education, think your water bill, think your road. You don't give it any consideration. You don't like, all you do is gripe about it. As opposed to, you know, you're driving down the road, I'm so happy and grateful that we have this wonderful public roadway. I, I, I have to tell my, all my friends about how wonderful the road is. Every, like, you don't care about the road. You just use it. It's a thing I get, right? And then if there's a pothole, oh, lousy government doesn't fill in the pothole. The, the things we get for free are, are cheap and, and fairly replaceable. It's the things that, or no, it's the things you get for uh, never mind. Never mind. I'm, I'm not going to go down that route. Look, point I'm trying to make is if somebody gives you something, you don't usually value it. And I, I've talked to salespeople who have been at the top. I'm, I'm talking big time earners who've done incredible things. And they will all say the same thing as well. They will not drop a price. If something is worth $50,000, it's $50,000. And they won't bat an eye. They're like, no, nah, I'm not going to bring it down to 40. I'm not going to bring it down to 49.9. No, it's not happening. Like it's $50,000 because people do not respect you if you give ground. It's, you know, when it comes to sales, it's about confidence. It's about certainty. And that, that applies to, you know, all of business and the information that course creators about, um, you know, coaches give. You want it for free because you think it's going to help you. But more likely than not, if you got it for free, you would have wonder, is it really worth it? Because why would they give it away for free? But if it costs you a lot of money, one, you're going to place value on it just because it costs a lot of money. But two, you don't want that money to go to waste. You'd be like, man, I spent like five grand on this thing. I need to make sure that like I take care of it. If, if you get a new car and it costs you $70,000 because the average price of a car today is like 38,000, right? So if you get one twice the value of, of uh, the average value of a car, you're going to wash that thing. You're going to care for it. You're going to make sure it doesn't get into any accidents. You're going to like baby that thing for a little bit, right? If you spend $150,000 on a car, you spend a million dollars on a car. I mean, if you're spending a million dollars on a car, you have insurance, you probably don't care too much, but I mean- the average person, if you spend more than your means on something, you're going to value it more than everything else. And you're going you're to put your focus and attention on it. But if you give it for free, it's not true. So I'm, I don't want to beat that horse to death anymore. Um, I'm going to remind you all, organization is the enemy of sloth. Really 
think this one through. Really consider it because too many people are being cheap. They're, they're being low quality by looking for low quality. They want low quality in their life. Spend some time and research the things that will actually advance you, not just get you by. Figure out what those are and don't care about the price, okay? The price is something that it's not important. It's the value you're looking for. If the value is there, if the value is gonna get you to where you need to be, get it. There's no excuse not to, unless you are literally flat broke, you can find the money. Beg, borrow, and steal. Go get another client. Go find something to build your business even further. Go mow lawns. Go wash windows. Do something else, right? Get the money to do it because if it's worth it, it's worth it, it's worth it. But that requires the research. It requires the self-reflection uh, on your part to be willing to get past those inner roadblocks of yours that are holding you back and preventing you from seeing the point I'm trying to make here. So that's what I want to say. All right, everybody. Don't be just a gamer. Be a gamer for newer.